In the past, I've done a few videos on the Arduino and Raspberry Pi based guitar pedals by the people over at Electro Smash. And today, go take a look at their newest pedal offering, the Time Manipulator. But as you can see, this one's a little bit different. Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Splits Day DIY, and this is the Time Manipulator pedal by Electro Smash. And they did send this over to me to take a look at uh, for review. So this is the newest pedal in their lineup, and just like a few of the others, it is powered by Arduino, but this time they've really stepped things up. Instead of going for a shield form factor or other add-on board to go with um, an Arduino Uno or other uh, variation of the board, uh, they have integrated an Atmega328 processor into the circuit board that is inside this guitar pedal. The 328 comes pre-loaded with a bunch of effects that you change around and control with the rotary encoder and other controls on board, and that means a lot of exciting things. First off, as you can obviously see, this looks like an off-the-shelf guitar pedal. It's in a traditional metal housing. Uh, it's powder-coated, means you can just kind of throw it around with your other pedals and not have to worry about getting damaged. It's also using traditional 9 volts, which means you can throw it into your pedal chain uh, with your regular power supply and not have to worry about USB or 12 volt or another proprietary supply. It can just kind of go in for your other pedals, don't even have to think about it. There are also potentiometers on board uh, previously, and they're designed specifically for space. Uh, they would use these push buttons that did work, but there is just something about a potentiometer, uh, especially if you are a guitarist that is used to using your more traditional guitar pedals, it just um, feels a little bit more natural, like you're in a little bit more control. Now, since they weren't confined to a shield form factor, the circuitry is a lot more robust. You're going to get less power interference uh, and also uh, just a more beefier sound because of the gain stages they've been able to put in here and just the overall circuit design. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I'm not taking anything away from the Pedal Shield Uno, the Pedal Shield Mega, or even the Pedal Pi. I still think those are really awesome designs and really fun to noodle around with, but it's clear, like, with this one, they've really stepped it up. And this, I don't think, should really be compared to those. I think this is kind of like a next generation. And that's what I like about Electro Smash. They're always pushing the envelope. Even with the Pedal Shield Uno to the Pedal Shield Mega, there were a ton of improvements, and we're just seeing kind of a continuation here. Another change this time around is that they're focusing on one family of effects, as the name suggests. By focusing on the family of delay effects with like chorus and reverb, they're able to better design the circuitry to reflect the tonalities and qualities of those effects. Now, as I said, the 328 comes pre-loaded with effects, but it is open source. It is Arduino. You can pop the 328 out and put your own effects on there or modify the existing code. And Electrosmas does have instructions on how to do that. So just because you're not using an Arduino board doesn't mean you can't still noodle around with the code side of things with this pedal. And speaking of instructions, uh, let's talk about those and how they relate to the assembly. This is still a kit, and it's a really fun kit to assemble. The board has a lot of stuff going on. Uh, you're going to be soldering for a while, and for me, that's awesome. Uh, it is a little bit more challenging than their previous boards, because we are dealing with a guitar pedal form factor. That means a circuit board is actually has some teeth to break apart at some points to get like the quarter inch jack portions out and everything like that. So you do have to kind of pay close attention to what you're doing, but the instructions, as always, from Electro Smash are clear. They have some great visuals, uh, and all the parts and everything are nicely labeled in the kit as well. I think if I have to compliment one thing on the board design and the components and everything, it's that all of the ICs are socketed, and that means you're not soldering them directly to the board, especially the Atmega 328. And I, I just love when kits utilize that because then if you need to swap out an IC, it makes things really simple. Enough talk though, I feel like we should get into how this thing sounds. Previously with uh, the pedal demos for Electro Smash, I've gone through every sound and played around and everything. I'm gonna try something a little bit different and instead uh, play with some of my favorite effects on here. And there are nine pre-programs right here, and we'll go through how that all works. Uh, but just to kind of try to keep things a little bit more interesting, I'm just gonna go with my favorite effects. A wild guitar appears. So the way that you change between effects is that you kind of press on this rotary encoder here 
And then as you can see, as I'm twisting around, you're getting the different color codes for the different effects. And you can tell you've reached the end because you get the double orange for the kind of the psycho effect, which we will be listening to. Don't, don't worry. I mean, I can't skip over the effect called psycho. Uh, so I'm going to start off with the first effect that's available, and that's called the short delay. And this definitely has more of like your classic delay sound. And I'm going to put the mix all the way up and kind of really bring out the most of this effect. <laughs> So you can hear it's nice and bouncy. Uh, you get some really nice articulation with it, uh, which I really enjoy. So this is reverb. I have an effect engaged right now, but you're not hearing anything because... Uh, so this is called the telegraph effect, and you could tap in some Morse code. Now of course, traditionally it's a foot pedal, so it would be on the ground and you could use your foot. So you could stomp different rhythms, and what's really cool about this is uh, back in the day, uh, a lot of guitarists would use uh, their pickup selector. Uh, if you had different gain stages for each pickup, uh, you could basically turn the volume all the way down on one of them, and then you'd be playing with your other one. And you could flick your pickup selector between the two and get that exact effect. Now, of course, all guitars don't have this. This one doesn't. Uh, so I just have the uh, volume and tone knobs on here for both of them, and then I can select either bridge, neck, or a mix in between. So, I think it's cool that you can do that on the, the pedal. Uh, now, this is an effect that is unique to this pedal. I don't think it really exists elsewhere. It's called Psycho, and you'll I think you'll understand why. You hear how when it gets higher in the frequency, it kind of bends the tone a bit so you're not in key? Like, look, this is a whole, this is a whole step. You can hear, you might be able to hear on the record, on the mic that I'm recording here, that it's kind of shifting. Can you can see the eyes shift. That's the amount of the effect that's changing up. Oh yeah. You can hear that kind of like twisting. Um, I'm not sure how practical it is for everyday use, but you might have a song that sounds cool on, or I think you could also really, uh, I mean, we aren't even touching on the fact that you could also use this with like synths, you know, just saying. Uh, so I thought that was, that was pretty neat. And then last but not least, Echo. Uh, and I think they did a really good job with Echo. It sounds like this really awesome combo of delay, chorus, and reverb with some slapback, which is really cool. heard some tasty sounds. Um, let's talk a little bit about the pedal operation. I will say noodling around with this pedal does have a little bit of a learning curve. That's not unusual with your more kind of boutique style pedals that are cramming in some extra controls. And Electro Smash does have a full instruction sheet on how to operate the pedal, what everything is explicitly doing, uh, and I recommend reading it thoroughly. Don't be like me and skim it and then dive in and then get confused. My initial confusing stemmed from the rotary encoder switching between the uh, selection mode and the master control mode 
for the individual effects, uh, simply because both the effects are identified with different color combos on the LEDs, um, but also the range values that you're accessing within an effect is also identified with similar colors for the LEDs. So I found that to be a little bit confusing. Now, of course, they have the color codes listed in the instructions and also on one of the stickers provided, uh, which I popped on the pedal just for my reference. And you do get used to it, but it's definitely something that isn't, um, at least in my opinion, as intuitive as it possibly could be. And that's honestly my main criticism of this pedal. I either wish that the LEDs were RGB so that you had more distinct colors uh, telling you what was up, or, and I think they specifically didn't do this for spacing, which I totally understand, but if there were a second rotary encoder, so that there's one rotary encoder that is explicitly switching between the effects, and then another rotary encoder that is allowing you to dial in the um, master range for the effect, and different indicator lights uh, for each, I think that would make things a little bit more clear. I totally get why they didn't do that, and also, I mean, this this cat graphic. Can we talk about how cool this cat graphic is? And then the LEDs are its eyes. I mean, come on, it doesn't it doesn't get better than that? Uh, but I I do think then in that case, like maybe an RGB LEDs, and then it would be a little bit more explicit colors that would be happening. So that'd be the only thing I would change, um, just to make things a little bit smoother, a little bit more intuitive on that end of things. But of course this whole thing is open source and if there's something on the code end or the hardware end even that you're not a big fan of, you can tweak it and they have everything documented on their website. They also have a really cool forum you can chat in as well. I think what you are getting here is a really vastly improved uh, tone uh, over previous iterations of the pedal while still keeping that core concept at play here, which is really awesome. And also the quality of that case and the fact that it's using a standard um, 9 volt uh, power input, awesome, and also it has a cat on it. And that's going to do it for this video. Another fantastic, innovative, open source Arduino based guitar pedal from the good people at Electro Smash that can fit comfortably right into your effects chain. I'll have all the appropriate links down in the description. I encourage you to check out ElectroSmash's website. In addition to selling kits and having the forum, they also do some really cool write-ups on circuit analysis of classic guitar pedals. And they also released their first non-microcontroller uh, based guitar pedal, a fuzz pedal, a couple months back too. So they have that on their site too if you want to check that out. And one more time for the cheap seats in the back, this cat graphic. Just, just take it in. It's magnificent. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this and hopefully more cats. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.